I didn't do the ring run of the path of Gorchard in Battalion Wars 2, simply to showcase how good the Battalion Wars mechanics are. Wow, that was clumsy. Ah. Not only are we complaining about that, but thanks, Walsy. I didn't know what to say with this commentary. Sure, my vitality is good. And for my strength, but my... It's... I'm an idiot! <laughs> oh god, oh god. Ah! <laughs> I'm an idiot! But just because it seems to get easier doesn't mean I can relax yet. No, of course not. <clears throat> oh god. Wow, that was shocking. <sighs> that was fun. When you're horizontal with them, they'll fire later. It <laughs> I collided with a flamer. Yeah, I'm aware that that mm, more or less mm, mm, says that I'm a crazy wizard, of course. But I don't believe that. Play pragmatic. I didn't even go pragmatic. What was up with you, B button? I don't believe that. But the basic thing is, it, uh, what is it? But the basic thing is that I even do the chicken runs in the first place, and that's a failure. Now that sounds hypocritical because it, because, uh, hey guys, I do them for five with, uh, yeah. Thorar. Eight. I collide with a coral. What? But I'm wa watchful because because it's harder than he was in Kirby Superstar. Ah! Yeah. That was a surprise. Here's Krakow, who's normally ah uh, as bad. Okay, so I'm going to showcase what is behind this door. Say hello to Aerostar, renamed in the North American version, the Bombar. It's by far the stupidest bit of localization, because... What's the point? First off, Aerostar is fine. There's already a move. There's already a mook in the game called Bomber. Why get rid of Aerostar's name creativity just to rename them similar to a mook? But that's not the only problem I have there. Oh no. Aeros Bomber implies that Aerostar is a dedicated and a surface plane. He fires air-to-air -air missiles! Well, he's not doing it now, but he does. Anytime! Stop dropping bombs, or you're going to get killed. Ugh. But yeah, Aerostar does fire air-to-air -air missiles. There we go. That means that Aerostar is an attacker! Oh, I'm sorry. I talked through the fight with Aerostar. <sighs> Bomar, the freaking attacker! Oh, God. And I picked up his missile ability. <laughs> I picked up Aerostar's missile ability because it's neat. 
the game expects you to grab it for a treasure chest a little ways back from the door. You don't need the missile ability exclusively, but yeah. Here we go. You don't. That's why you would need the missile ability. <sighs> I don't believe it. Nintendo of America must have been too busy abusing ability. Like one particular ability that actually is broken in this game. I'll get to that. It, it does. But it's broken because of. <sighs> Uh, I'll get to it. I'll save it for another time. Let me get to the analysis. Oh, wait a minute. I should showcase how the fight with Cracker goes. He took eight hits. Mainly because I... <laughs> yeah, that attack. I failed to dodge it in, in both out. It, it didn't show up again. It didn't show up in a successful run. Avoid that by moving in the corner, thank heavens. Mm -hmm. Sliding, thank you. Oh, oh, you can go into the corner to avoid the lightning attack. Wow. Just, wow. <coughs> no, what the heck, let me grab the maxim. Now we go to the analysis. So, Mustard Mountain only had links to give problems. Just the C rings, mainly due to the links, too. Since I didn't get the, ch the chance to explain the, the issues with links last time because of Molly's bloody durability, let me explain. First off, higher links result in more chances to get hit. And in a perfect run, that can get rather aggravating. Secondly, when you get to the end of the area, your nerves can just as easily be shot, which is mitigated a bit for me by my working fatality, but it can still happen, especially with amazing near areas. Combine that with Kirby Games being the top codifier for boss dissonance in favor of harder bosses than levels, and it ends up causing problems. Speaking of bosses, Krakow was harder than any certain superstar, but that's just relative. He's still not terribly hard. The only reason I had to give a Bokum commentary was because Krakow is a lightning fast battle spike and I'm some freaking rage he doesn't even save a speed. That second one, by the way, does not excuse how Kiddicker's writing can really favor Kiding. If anything, it proves that the game is imbalanced because Kiding is a shallow strategy in and of itself. But I'm here to talk about the matchup issue. At the end of the day, Krako is considerably tougher than he is in Kirby Superstar, but he has one fatal flaw that keeps him from being hard. His minion really is telegraphed enough to be exploited if you're near enough him. 
That does bug me a little, but I still dare say the fight is still well defined. It's just that the fight is rather sensitive to how much you focus on it. Speaking of focus, since about every boss in Amazing Mirror punishes Mirror for blinking, I have to leave talking about their behavior to the hard annotator. So now that's three down, five to go. Next time, we're going to journey to a castle and storm it. Until then, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. MKDH, out.